Hello, Graham Cox from Moody Views. I've recently done this snow scene picture for Leisure Painter magazine and we thought this time we'd do a video of the painting to uh, accompany the magazine's article. So I'm going to be using six colours from the from my Rembrandt pastel set. This is the uh, 101.5 white, 3718 uh, permanent red deep, 5485 blue violet, this is the 5058 ultramarine light, 5067 ultramarine deep and 5065 ultramarine deep and then I've got a few of the Caran d'Ache super soft pastel pencils, this is the uh, the white one 300 orange 047 bistair 066 is Raw Russet, uh, 506 is Payne's Grey, then I've got uh, 408 which is a dark brown and the 009 which is a black. So that's all we're going to be using to complete this painting and I've, I've done this painting on a, a, on a piece of pastel paper that's got a very fine tooth in it. This is a piece of uh, Canson Me Tent. Uh, it's A4 size but I've got it in the portrait style so we're actually going to do a square painting that is uh, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So the paper is onto a piece of smooth board. It's taped across the top and the bottom just to hold it firmly in place. So I'm going to start this picture with the 5058. This is the lighter of the blues and using the side of the pastel stick I'm just gonna, I'm not pressing extremely hard here, I'm just running some colour into the paper and I'm just coming down to the horizon line here in the distance. Let's work that in. Now as you can see as I'm doing this there are patches of paper showing through. That At this stage that's fine, no problem at all. I'm then going to add into that a little bit of the 3718, this is the permanent red, into the lower part of the sky. This is just to help warm the picture a little bit. Don't want too much at this stage. And I'm just going to go back and put a little bit more of that blue at the top. Let that run into the pink. So at this stage now we're going to push all that colour down into the tooth or the texture that's in the paper surface. So you've got to press fairly hard to do this. I'm using my fingertips, just working the colour into the tooth of the paper. Now, again you will still have some patches of paper showing at this stage. This is just the first initial stages of blending the colour in. We're not trying to do it in one hit. I do want to keep it quite thin where the, the foliage is going to go on the tree there. I don't want too much pastel there uh, because the more tooth I've got the more foliage I can get on the tree. Okay so I'm now going to go back with the, uh, the same colours and repeat um, that process again. I'm going to introduce the slightly darker blue, this is the 5067 Ultramarine Deep. And again just bring that down. A little bit more pink into here and then on either side down here I'm going to add a little bit of the 5485 this is the blue violet just into the distance there and again working from the bottom of the picture here from the lighter areas just push that color in there this is where we're trying now to get 
no paper showing through. We want it all nice and smooth. We can still add a little bit more if we need to. If we've got bare patches, you can still add some more colour. You've got to press. If you find that you've got patches, first of all, try pressing a little harder. And if that doesn't work, then add a little bit more colour. Once you've done this a few times, you'll, you'll get the feel of how much you need to put on. Work that right up into the top. Okay. Quite happy with that now. I've got that little bit of warmth there behind the tree. Okay, so having to completed the sky, we can now work on these uh, the distant trees that are way back in the distance. So this is where I'm going to switch to the pastel pencils. And I'm going to start with the 506, this is the Payne's Grey. A nice long point, but I'm actually going to use the side of the point. So the pencil is held at a very shallow angle to the paper, not pressing hard at all now, just allow the colour to, to come off the pencil and sit on the top of the tooth. I'm going to put a little bit into the distance on this side, but I don't want this to be too strong. It's going to be way back. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that. So we've got a bit of a hedgerow way back in the distance there. So then, using a little fingertip, just work it round in little circles. Now, I'm not pressing extremely hard. All I'm trying to do here is to soften it in and the more I keep blending, the more it'll mix with the sky colours underneath and the fainter it'll go. So you can kind of judge how, how strong you want the tone to be by how much you keep blending it. And th over this side I'm going to blend more because I want it to be fainter. So it looks further away. Okay, so I'm now going to go back with the same colour. I'm just going to darken the bottom a little bit more. And then I'm going to take the 047 Bistair. Now the sunlight is coming from the right. So the same technique with the pencil on its side. You're just picking up little highlights on the right hand sides and the top of these trees. The more detail you put into these trees, the nearer they will come. We want them to sit back in the distance, so it's just lightly done. And again, just very lightly, just take the edge off and give it that slightly muted, misty look. And that's all they need. That's all that's required for those distant trees. A little bit of that colour into that edge row. No more than that. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to just bring a little bit of the distant snow into the coming down into the uh, middle part of the picture. So I'm going for the back to the pastels to the 5058, the lighter blue. And there's a directional stroke here that comes slightly downwards like this. And we can tidy up the bottoms of those trees now but pull that colour slightly angled downwards and then it reappears as a distant field back in there so it kind of goes behind our main tree here now and then just soften just let that colour soften in
that'll probably do. Just make sure there's no patches of paper showing. Okay, so I'm going to start working now on the um, on the main tree there. Now there is a there is a, a danger at this point that if I rest my hand here, I could smudge those distant trees. So I'm going to use a sheet of acid-free crystalline leafing paper. This is called Glacine. It's got a waxy uh, coating on it. And I'm just going to rest this on the picture here, just on top of those distant trees, just to make sure I don't smudge anything by accident there. Right, so I'm going to reach now for the the black pastel pencil, 009 black, to begin to create um, the base of the foliage colour uh, in the base of the picture here. And there's going to be quite a bit of colour on this to contrast against the coldness of the snow. But it's the same technique that we used on those distant trees. You want your black to be flat to the paper. And you're just trying to get the c enough pressure to make the colour sit only on the tops of the tooth not to fill in the little hollows and that gives you that speckled look gives you texture and we've got a little bit of a, a fence that, that disappears off down there in the distance going to come slightly further this way so it's not a solid black you can see the uh, the paper in patches tiny little patches through that and so now on top of that I'm going to introduce um, some of the um, other colors a little bit of the 047 Bistair which is the color we used in the trees the distant trees there this this will help uh, give some unity to the picture colors repeated throughout the same colors being repeated throughout the picture just a little bit of that color so we've left the kind of black at the bottom and this color is going on the top of that top edge of that I'm going to run a little bit of the 066 in on the top of there all the same technique, very light touch, just using the side of the point. That'll do for now. Now we're going to go to the 408, this is the dark brown, and we're going to take the trunk of the tree up out of these bushes. And then what I'm going to do is take out from there the main branches. So one going there, one going there, I'm going to have one coming out here, and we've got another one that's coming out there. Let's have one coming, coming out of there. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing these branches. I've got more pressure on the pencil at this point where it leaves the trunk. That gives me not only a darker line, but a thicker line. Now from those, we're going to take the next branches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a third of the way up the branch and I'm going to do the next one that comes off of there. Slightly more pressure on the pencil here. As I go down the branch, I'm easing the pressure off and I'm slightly turning the pencil. So a third of the way on each branch, approximately a third.
and then we'll do that again. We'll go a third up these branches. So another one there. Now we're going to put some foliage, dead foliage, around the end of the tree. So we don't need to put in all the tiny little twiggy bits that are on the ends. We're not too worried about those because they're going to get covered up anyway. A few little bits and a few twigs sticking out of the top of the bushes there. So that's given me a, a nice framework. Um, I said the, the sunlight was coming from the right. So I'm just going to lighten up the trunk a little bit. And uh, just some of these branches where they're kind of coming out of the face of the trunk rather than out of the side. And I'm going to go to the black, which is the 009, and darken the other side and the underside of those branches. To there, so that's giving me a nice framework now for the uh, for the foliage on the uh, on the tree. So this is where we're going to put the foliage on. So I'm going to go back to the 047, the bistair, and it's the same technique again as you did with the distant trees here and the foliage here. You want your pencil point flat to the paper, very light touch, just allowing the colour to sit on the tops of the paper's texture. These are just the, the last dead dying leaves that are clinging on. Put a little bit across the trunk. few tiny touches of the, uh, the raw russet. Don't want too much, just little touches here and there. And a few little touches of the orange in one or two places. Especially on this side, which is the sunlit side. can start working on our tracks down in the uh, in the foreground here. I'm going to bring the snow a little bit further down first so I'm going to reach back to my uh, 5058 the ultramarine light. This slope is still going down this way Just running that blue into the into the black at the base of those bushes just a little bit. Then I'm going to go to the 5067. A little bit of shadow being cast at the base of those bushes. And then a tiny, tiny touch. This is quite a strong blue. This is the 5065 Ultramarine Deep. The very dark blue.
and I'm going to pull all that colour in the direction that the land is lying. So it's just a slight angle coming down. And I'm just slightly touching the black that I put on at the base of those bushes and pushing the blue into it so it makes the, the bushes look like they're growing out of the, the ground or the snow rather than stuck on like a stamp. little highlight so going back to the pencil side of the point just drag the color and I'm not going to blend that that gives me that little bit of sparkle on the uh, surface of the picture I'm going to put a few fence posts sort of coming out coming out of here that'll do for those okay I'm going to scrape a little bit of uh, extra color onto those bushes now uh, so I'm going to start with the um, 066 and you get right down close to the surface of the painting and with a nice sharp blade just scrape gently and let the fragments drop straight onto the picture. O four seven, same colour we used in the foliage at the top. And some three hundred orange. Very easy to overdo this mine too. You don't want too much of this. And then I'm going to put it some white. Now all those fragments at the moment are only sitting on the surface of the picture. They're not fixed. So this is where you need to go back to your sheet of glassine. You've got to make sure this doesn't slide sideways as it goes down. So what I tend to do is hold it off the picture and then just let it drop. And then you just press. Just press those little fragments of colour. Take it off carefully and they are now fixed to the picture's surface. So now we will introduce the um, track that's uh, leading in to the, uh, the picture. I'm just going to use the white uh, pastel pencil just to give me an idea of where that's going. So one there, we've got three of these where the tractor has, has gone through here. And then a middle one. And then one there. So take that round behind there. So the sunlight is coming from this side. So on this side of the uh, of the tracks, we're, we're in shadow. So I'm going to use the the point or the end of the, of the pastel here just to. start to introduce the shadow bits, shadow sides. Notice the angle of the stroke. I'm going to go to the very dark blue, the 5065, and put some of that in. And then I'm going to use the colour shaper tool. This is a flat chisel edge soft colour shaper number six and I'm going to use it to just pull and smudge those little bits of colour. So the ang again following the, the, the way the, the land is lying and the way the, the tracks or the snow is 
mounded up on the little ridges and then we'll use the the white I'm going to use the pencil first bring some of this, uh, this is the 5067 blue, just darkening the, the bottom of the foreground, this will help to give the picture a little bit more depth, so that snow fades, it gets lighter as it goes backwards into the picture. Now I'm going to come in with the white pastel And then back to the colour shaper again and then I'm going to pull the colour the other way this time. I'll go back and brighten that up again because when you tend to blend you do take the brightness away from the colour. So we can go back and we can touch that back up again in a minute. I'm going to go in with a little bit of black just in one or two little spots on here. Again, I'll go in with the colour shaper and just take the edge off of this in a minute. A little bit of shadow perhaps cast by those fence posts. As I said, back to the, uh, the bright white and we'll just sharpen up the brightness on the top edges of the ridges in the snow there. Just making sure that disappears back up into there. Highlight on the snow, perhaps. Just using the side of the point, just where the light's catching. And a little bit darker, just down here in the foreground. So, there you go. That's, uh, that's how it was done. Um, I hope that um, helps you to understand how I work the pastels and the pencils together. Uh, I will add at this point that if you're going to use pastels and pencils, the pencils have to be soft. If you're going to work a pastel pencil into a, a soft pastel background or underpainting, the, the so pastel that's in the pencils needs to be as soft or softer. And that is why I use this, this particular brand. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll uh, see you again soon.